Let's find out what's inside. Wow, the refrigerator is pretty cold. I'd better grab this. I'd better grab this. this kind of big to carry around but I'll remember it's here I don't want to carry it around with me but now that I know it's here I can use it if I need to This will help the flowers grow. I just hope it doesn't eat a hole through the bottom of the planter box. This is one of the ingredients we need to complete this spell. bite my hand off. I don't want to waste good perfume with that. I don't want to smell like a French, um, house of women of no more fiber. Good perfume with that. I smell good enough already. That is debatable. I can't use an empty bottle of body lotion with that. from all the tourists rotting in his gizzard. Disgusting! Maybe the whole perfume bottle will make him smell better. Breathe into this bottle. 
Why should I? Because we need your breath for something. Clever. Well, then I will never breathe into that. Great. Good going. You ever heard of tricking people into doing things they otherwise wouldn't do? I'm sorry. I thought it was best to go with a direct approach. Which do you like better? The direct approach or getting the hell out of here, eh? Ah, uh, I see your point. Man. This will get him to open his mouth eventually. Hold your breath all you want, blockhead. You have to breathe eventually. It will never work, plebeians. I can hold my breath for ten minutes. Yeah, we'll just see about that. will no longer be needed. You are most decidedly not welcome. Frederick, do you think this drawing of a newt will work for the eye of newt? Give it a shot, and let's hope that supernatural science is not as literal as real science. It's a wooden walkway that spans a chasm. We can't do much walking on it when it's stuck way up there. It appears to be a list containing information about the prisoner. It's nice to know Shroudy's mother was so thorough. I'm sure it's hard to take good notes while you're busy torturing somebody. She must have been an excellent multitasker. It says... Prisoner identified as Irish tourist Shannon O'Doherty. Initially observed as member of local nunnery tourist exchange. The nuns only arrange tours for the most pious of individuals. Virginity has been confirmed. Her blood is exactly what I need to help unlock the mystery of the Book of Shrouds. That's terrible. Why would anyone need blood? I'll see if I can lower it. The walkway isn't coming down. It looks like the controls are broken. Fordrick, help me ferry those bones to safety. Sure, no problem. We better not try and grab them. You see how fragile they are? The moment we disturb them, they'll tumble into the demonic goo. You're right. I guess we'll just have to find some other way to retrieve those bones.
It's a window for the dungeon. I forgot my compass, but if I had the guess, I'd say that window faces east. It's a chalkboard with some writing on it. It says, formula for creating carbon-based organic acid. Three beakers, purple hearts, green clovers, blue... Oh, orange diamonds. One third demonic snot, one third color drink, one third color drink. Cool first, form second, cool last. Look for pink hue. Oh, I love pink. Heat to boil in ceramic cauldron till it is glowing wet. Use demonic heat. Pour on carbon-based life form and enjoy. It's an empty ceramic beaker with a heart symbol. It's an empty ceramic beaker with a diamond symbol. It's an empty ceramic beaker with a clover symbol. This should make the cherry soda undiet. Sweet! Yes, it should be sweeter. No, I meant sweet as in that's cool. Sorry for the confusion. Next time I'll just say awesome. Look, the liquid in the hot beaker turned purple. The liquid in the diamond beaker turned bright orange.
interesting. The liquid in the clover beaker turned bright green. It's a Bunsen burner, a small stove used to heat things. That might be a good conversation if that talked back. Too bad. Fishnet stockings and high heels? Wow! I don't know what's in that stuff, but it's got quite a kick. Kinda reminds me of the bat shine my Uncle Jess used to make. I remember this one time, I brought a jar of it to a party. All I really remember is taking the first couple of sips. Then the next thing you know, it's five hours later, I'm in a complete stranger's belfry, I suddenly have this new tattoo, and to top it all off, my pants are missing. This sounds like an incredibly touching story, but I'm afraid we don't have time to hear it right now. Look, Fodrick! It's boiling! It has turned bright red! It worked! the magic acid we made on those columns.
Let's just get what we need and get out of here. Go! Back? Stay back, I say. I don't wish to harm me, but I'll do so if you leave me no choice. What now? Can't anything ever be easy? Hello. May I talk to you? My name is Shannon O'Doherty. I've come from Ireland to search far and wide for my one true love. How did you end up in Draxylvania of all places? I did some research into local demographics. There appeared to be a discrepancy in regards to the number of men versus the number of women in the greater Draxylvanian area. Apparently, many of the women have died over recent years due to an unusual outbreak of anemia. Interestingly enough, this same affliction seems to have taken its toll on the local paperboy population. I figured with so many men available, I was bound to find my one true love. Were you able to find a man? Indeed I was. Not long after I arrived here with my tour group, I received a letter at my hotel. It was addressed to me from Burgermeister Willem Vinton, Mayor of Gothford Falls. He said he was interested in meeting me after catching a glimpse of my fiery red hair. Did you ever get to meet this Burgermeister, William Vinton? Yes, but only briefly. He came to my hotel saying he wanted to meet me. As the mayor of Gothford Falls, he always enjoyed spending time with young ladies new to the area. I believe he took a liking to me, for he invited me to come up to his room so we could discuss Draxylvanian history. Sounds like this Burgermeister was looking to get to know a wee bit of the Irish. How did you end up in this castle? A woman came to speak with our tour group, saying that she was the Baroness von Kiefer. She asked me how old I was and how it came to be that I was in Draxylvania. After I told her about myself, she offered me a job working at her castle. Since I knew that I had found my true love in Willem, I decided to stay in Draxylvania and took her up on her offer. The first night in the castle, the Baroness brought me a warm cup of tea. After taking a drink, I grew very tired, and the next thing I remember is waking up here. Why don't you leave here? I surely want to, but until my bones can be buried in a consecrated grave, I must guard them till the end of time. Mm, bummer. All of your bones, you say, or most of them? Good question. I'll have to ask. Ask whom? Another good question. My, you're just full of them. Why do you ask, anyway? Never mind. Uh, don't worry about it. Would it be alright if we borrowed one of those bones there? I can't let you do that. I'm saving them for my burial in consecrated ground. I feel the need to stay here until that happens. Guard your bones all the time? I must stand vigil through this endless night. My true love, Willem, rescues me at dawn. He'll bury my bones and hold me in his arms forever. Oh, how I long for the morning. Hmm. Well, thank you for our little chat. It was my pleasure. Mona. It's clear that there's no way we're going to get those bones while she's still guarding them. And she's apparently going to be guarding them until the sun comes up. But that will be too late. I can't wait until the sun rises. Then I guess we're in deep guano. No virgin ghost is going to stop me. Mona, I like your confidence. I don't want to fly into that. Wait. You know what? I do! Great! Now why didn't we open that trap door before? Certainly! If we just... The key! The rats! The Rufus! Ugh. Yeah, what are you gonna do?
It's a note pinned to the control panel. Uh, let me save you crow's feet and read that for you. It says, Baron Shroudy, I fixed the control panel for the theater flats. I had to, uh, find something about uh, cross-wired to some power source. Uh, we'll fix it next time, I think. Signed RM. Man, this guy must be a doctor. I can barely read this note. Fordzik, here's a chance to put that mouth of yours to good use. going to work now. this image someplace. I'll just cut them out in case. I might need them, although I can't carry them around, but I'll keep them in mind. These two items won't combine together. These two items won't combine together. Rick, would you go get those theater flats we cut out? Sure, if you tell me where they go. Jake? 
fly over and hangs a sun backdrop outside of the window. Maybe we can trick Shannon into thinking the sun has risen. Okay, I'll get right on it. So, um, how is it being a ghost? Boring as heck. Boring as heck, huh? Sorry to hear that. What about the heat from this demonic goo? Tolerable. As you can imagine, I don't feel much as a ghost. No, I would think not. And being a vampire? Well, there is some doubt about me being a vampire. Really? You look like a vampire. And the teeth! Yes, odd about those, but I'm still not convinced. Interesting. Hurry up, Fodrick! What is taking you so long? What? Oh, nothing. Just wondering where my bat went. Oh, thank God. Phew! Done. What took you so long? I had to get some nails and jam them into the crack outside. And lady, those things aren't exactly light. Shh! What is this? Has the sun risen already? I can see it, but something isn't quite right. It seems like it's morning, but somehow I'm not convinced. I think she almost believes that it's dawn. An animal noise toy doesn't go with that. It's an animal noise toy from Shroudy's toy chest. Oh, I hate the sound of morning. Drake, will you play this toy for me later? Sure, just tell me when. That won't work. For Drake, take that animal wheel that I set to rooster and fly outside by the window and play that sound. That might convince her it really is morning. Good idea. I'll give it a shot. Look on the bright side, Mona. 
At least she's already dead. This will be useful. I'll take it. These two items won't combine together. Good! Well done! Excellent! We've got our portion of Golem creation ready for spray. Now all we need is a stone body! It might not be a perfect fit, but it's the only head we've got. How perfectly dreadful. This body has no sense of fashion. Stop whining! One more word out of you and you'll be spending the next 20 years of your miserable existence in the bottom of that privy at the closest Spanish restaurant I can find. better after all the crap we went through. Ooh, pretty! Yeah, but I hate purple. I'm more partial to pink. Oh, this is just great. Now I'm fat. Yippee! It worked! Go forth to the boathouse. There you will see the ghost of Shroudy holding the oars for the last boat. I want you to get those oars from Shroudy using any means necessary. Well, apparently I have to do whatever you say, so, all right. I work for a witch, now I'm taking orders from a bee. I heard that! You were supposed to. Hey, what the... Oh, Look, just give me the oars. It's worth it. Violence. Fortunately, I like violence. With the black of firecrackers, this boom bomb. Rufus Gollum, Rufus Gollum, rah, rah, rah! Go, Rufus! Ah, oh, not the boat! He got the boat. <laughs> you can keep the oars now, for all the good they will do you! <laughs>
should do the trick. Maybe not as nice as a boat, but at least it floats. Grab those oars, Mona. It's time for the maiden voyage of the SS Dirtnap. Mona, make his day. Keep going, Mona. I think you got him on the ropes. I can't seem to hit him. He moves way too fast now. Drink. After he swallowed that ice, he thickened up. It was easy to spray him this time. Are you sure we need to bring all this stuff? Of course, you idiot. We must be fully prepared. I am an expert on the Nosferatu. And one thing I know for sure is that the undead don't just sail up to you and present themselves. Hello, Vizel. Do you know a good place to land our copper? Uh, our pleasure cruiser? I don't know. Try over there around that point. Oh, okay. Thank you. For the loop. Right, whatever. What was I saying? Uh, the undead don't just sail up to you? Right. They cherish their lairs immensely and never willingly give them up. One thing I know for sure, this brood of the barons, this Mona, will be there waiting for us, getting ready to fiercely defend her crypt with every ounce of undead energy she possesses. She will never willingly leave that castle. We made it, Frogic! Who would have thought that crossing a simple lake would be such a pain in the ass? <sighs> well, off to Pelly. Wait, wait, wait! What are you gonna do? Walk there? I was thinking a train. A train? Even if we could child, catch a train, there's the small problem of you of only being night. able to travel at night. Come to that me. would have to be an extremely Come fast to me. train to make it to the next major city. Child, child of the night. Why are you not walking towards me? Aren't you listening? Do not make me count to three! One... Two... Three! Expanded yeah. drag Mr. coefficient, adjust for gravity... To you. Then, of course... Yeah! Finally! Mona! Wake up! 
Mona! Come, child, come inside where it is warm and safe. I have been waiting for you. We oui, mistress. Oh, I see. You want your fortune told. Good idea. And see if you can find out what's going to happen on next week's episode of Bats of Our Lives. Well, hello, my dearest Mona de Lafitte. Come in and sit down. We meet at last. Sorry to bother you, madame. I don't know, but I had the weirdest feeling that came over me. It compelled me to seek you out for some mysterious reason. Yes, yes, you learned that I have that effect on people. But goodness gracious, I am being rude. I know all about you, but you don't know me at all. Forgive me. I am called the Great Madame Strigoi, knower of all things better left unknown. Why have you summoned me here? I know your plight, and I know how best to prepare you for your journey home. Really? You know how to get me back to Pelly? Okay, listen very carefully, for I'm only going to say this as many times as you ask me to. First, you need your coffin to sleep in. Do you have it here? No! And what do you mean I need a coffin to sleep in? I thought Shroudy was being, well, uh, just being weird. Making me sleep in there when I had a perfectly good bed up in my boudoir. Besides, no self-respecting opera star would sleep in a coffin. It's absurd. Well, this opera star is going to have to. Now wake up, girl. You need a coffin to sleep in every night or you will die. You will die. Capiche? Well, I suppose... I do, but I'm not happy about it. Being a vampire isn't about being happy. Listen, child, in life stuff, uh, stuff just happens that we don't always like. We just have to get over it and move on as best we can. Besides, living the life, a uh, life of a vampire can be very rewarding and just as fulfilling as uh, real life. Trust me, child, I know. You are strong. I have seen it. You'll be just fine. And I'll guide you all the way. Now, where is your coffin? At the lake shore, where we left it. Uh-oh. Better go get it now. Constable Otto just passed here a few minutes ago on his nightly patrol. I think he said something about investigating a scream and looking out for two strangers a reported skulking hereabouts. Hurry and go get it and bring it back. ASAP! ASAP!